Hey everybody, I figured I would make this added intro to the video that I made yesterday because yesterday was the 4th of July uh, and we were in a hurry. My daughter-in-law and my granddaughter were coming over and we're going to go see fireworks and see the Air National Guard Band of the Northeast. Not the Coast Guard Band, like I said in the video, which you'll see coming up because that's what my wife told me it was. So they were upstairs waiting for me and I was so psyched with the uh, 2.60 software update and the and the treble booster that I finally got that I just did a quick video a one-off uh, and I want to explain some things now that I didn't do in the video that you're about to see number one uh, just a little technical thing I had set up the mic with the PA on so that you'd be able to hear me a little better over my guitar because it's really loud down here I don't play at a soft volume uh, and the problem was, was when I started singing with some of the stuff, the, the program I had, not program, the unit that I had, has a gate in it so that the guitar won't come through the mic. So as I'm talking, it sounds like I have a speech impediment because it keeps soaking out the uh, vocal. So that's what's going on. I don't have a speech impediment. Uh, second, let's talk about the treble booster. I should have given some uh, uh, history on it for people who don't understand what the treble booster is and and the history of it so the video you're about to see is me doing some brian may, brian may stuff from queen with the treble booster he originally had a dallas range master treble booster and as a lot of people pointed out so did tony iomi but tony iomi's treble booster his range master was highly modified it was not a stock uh, range master with Helix, you can, with all the controls you have, you can approximate it and get it, not approximate, you can probably get it to sound exactly like it. Um, I know I've done it with other treble boosters that weren't a range master. Um, I'm very familiar with treble boosters. I have owned many. My first treble booster was a Krispy Kreme. It wasn't an, exa an exact replica of Brian May's treble booster, but it was kind of a a mixture of different treble boosters, and it sounded really good. The next one I got was an RS. B, I think it was called, uh, built by this guy from me in Nottingham, England, and it was an awesome treble booster. And that was a knockoff of the Pete Cornish silicone uh, tra uh, treble booster that Brian used for like News of the World and, and that stuff, a jazz. Um, I'm not sure if it's News of the World, but he did use it later on. Um, I also own a, a Friar touring treble booster which brian may currently uses along with the uh, uh night te audio technologies treble boost on a strap uh i also use uh have a, a touring treble booster which is the uh not the touring the treble booster plus which is the knockoff of the peak cornish treble booster and i also have a custom made treble booster that greg fryer who built uh brian's treble boosters for many years um built for me, hand built for me to use with the Veta, that it would sound good with the Veta. So I love treble boosters. Uh, so again, Brian had the Range Master, he lost it. Uh, Pete Cornish built him a treble booster and Pete Cornish did his, his, his treble, board, uh, treble boosters for many years. Uh, then later on, Greg Fire, who uh, made his red special copies for him, measured everything so that he'd be able to have a spare if something happened with his guitar, built him his treble booster, and that's what he used for a long time. Uh, the guy that was in business with him, Nigel Knight, went off on his own and has uh, Knight Audio Technologies Cat, and uh, they build a real small treble booster that Brian has in his strap now, because it's so important to have the treble booster first in line because of the way uh, uh, it loads your pickups. You want to be in direct contact with that. Then he goes into other stuff. So. That's the history of the treble booster. So you're going to hear me do some Brian May stuff, and then I'm going to uh, do some uh, uh, stuff with, with the Lone Star, and I'm using my Pacifica guitar, my uh, 2112M. Uh, I love Pacifica guitars. I, that's all I played for many years, and I have a 921. I have a 1230S, which is the red <coughs> one that looks like a Telecaster with the glitter that you guys have seen before, and the 1221M that you're seeing now. I'm having them all modified now the, uh, with my MIDI pickups and different pickups. So the uh, red one has the MIDI pickup in it, and I have uh, the Retrotron pickups in it, and a P90, and a Dream 180. Uh, the 1221 has Seymour Duncan, 
whole lot of love humbuckers in it and it has a, a Seymour Duncan vintage rails in the middle uh, with the seven tone option where you can pull up one of the knobs and it brings in the uh, neck pickups you get the neck and the uh, bridge pickup at the same time along with the five-way selector and I have coil tabs on it and the 921 which I haven't gotten back yet has the new but the p-rail pickups and I'm supposed to get like ridiculous sounds with that so it's gonna the two p-rails and it's gonna have the vintage rails and I'm gonna have every option series parallel uh, single coil p90 humbucker everything so I should have that back soon so there's your intro this was a one-off the video I did we were they were waiting for me upstairs it's time to go so I just did it really quick but uh, great update guys 2.60 great stuff in there and I didn't add it and I didn't do a, uh, a, a video for it, which I might do later on love the uh, boss distortion pedal in there I used one for many years on my pedal board and I just started adding it and replacing certain uh, fuzzes with it great great stuff great update so have fun with this video bye hi everybody happy 4th of July 2018 it's Mark from Ruby Topaz uh, just got a chance last night to re to install the uh, Helix 2.60 firmware finally got a treble booster I am so psyched now I can do the Brian May stuff and and stuff I used to do with the treble booster and the Black Sabbath and all that stuff uh, but I figured I'd do a quick demo before we go out and see the Coast Guard band and the fireworks. My wife's upstairs going, hurry up. So <laughs> I'm going to do this really quick. Uh, and I'll do some Brian May stuff and show you how I get the Brian May sound with this. Uh, I, I know Brian May's set up pretty well. I couldn't do exactly what he does because he uses three amps and there wasn't enough memory in here to use three amps. So one is completely clean. One has the chorus and the one with the chorus and another one handle the delays that go from side to side. I could only use two. So I used the Dallas, Dallas Range Master with uh, a, a match, matchless, the matchstick. Uh, he uses uh, the normal channel of an AC30, so I used the four and figuring that would be it. But it just didn't sound right. So I'm searching around, I figured let me try the matchstick, I went to the little channels. Channel one seemed to be the one that worked for me here. Uh, I know that there was a time, I know that he does now actually use the Celestion uh, 12H30s or whatever the, the number is, but the 30 watt Celestions, not the vintage 30s, uh, on a couple of his cabinets. And I know for a time, a long time ago, he was experimenting with matchless. So I don't know, this just seems to work better. So you'll see it cleans up really nice. You turn it up, it's nice and chunky, it's distorted. This. This is the Brian May sound, so I'll give you a, a quick idea of what this sounds like. <laughs>
Oh, my God. 
Pacific is redone. I'm rediscovering them because I, I love them so much that they're all I played for the longest time. Um, you've seen the red 1230S, those uh, telecasts, that's where I glitter. Uh, I had the MIDI pickup in those and new pickups. This just came back. It's got a Seymour Duncan whole lot of humbuckers and a Seymour Duncan vintage rails. And it has the seven sound option where if I pull this, the neck pickup comes on so I can get neck and bridge at the same time. And I got oil caps here. So it's very versatile. My 921's in the shop now. I'm going to have a P rails put in those when I get it. I'll do a demo. It's a very cool guitar. So here's the Lone Star, which I think is very nice. <laughs>
Showing this here. So I did two patches with the Duke Shoma. One used with my net pickup, and one used with the bridge pickup. Uh, go straight ahead, and that's what's on the recording now. But this is the Duke Shoma. <laughs> Bye. Have a good boy. 